Once again, it's your boy's International Zone. We are now recording. The red light is on. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> Mark. <laughs> I am here in Johannesburg, South Africa. Just let me say safely, that is. Yeah. I'm with the real South Africa. Um, Mark, uh, tell them where you're from. All right, guys. I am from Fayetteville, North Carolina. North Carolina, that's where I grew up at. Um, mm -hmm. I always claimed D.C. because I spent more time in D.C. than I did there uh, because of the work and, and whatnot. But, yeah, so Fayetteville, North Carolina, and then D.C. I think I mentioned, or well, I should mention, that I am a Tar Heel. I'm not a Duke fan. So. <laughs> I got to say that, man. It's important. <laughs> yeah, I guess it is. I guess it is for those watching. Yeah. And so tell me, you were in the military for how long? Yeah, I was in the U.S. Army for like for like 13 years, did a lot of duty stations. My last one was in Germany, so which gave me a lot of experience being in Europe and all of that. So I understood that, you know, um, very well. But yeah, I did about 13 years in the Army. 13 years. And after the 13 years in the Army, you then what happened? Well, you know, I applied for the U.S. Secret Service. Um, I was, it was funny, I was the battalion, you know, retention guy. I was a guy that you re-enlisted with. Mm -hmm. And one day my uh, my boss came in and said, hey, you know, um, you know, these these civilian companies are looking for um, people. So one of them was Secret Service. So I said, well, let me apply. Mm -hmm. I read the criteria and I applied and uh, I got accepted. And then I separated from the military. And they do probably a, a rigorous background Ooh. check and all that stuff. They do. Just from people I've. You know, I'm a barber, so I've had some Secret Service people mm -hmm. in my chair before, mm -hmm. and you know, it's common knowledge. So you was clean cut, past. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somehow, <laughs> somehow, all that stuff I did when I was a kid didn't show up. Now, but I was, uh, you know, pretty much clean cut, had everything mm -hmm. in order, exactly what they was looking for. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. And tell people that want to know, like, how, what are the duties, and how was it from people on the outside and you being on the inside, if you can. A, being a secret agent, like mm -hmm. that's like it is. It, <laughs> no, it is. Is 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 it's a you know it's a very serious position, you know, and we take our job seriously. We was fortunate enough. I was fortunate enough to probably work with some of the best people that you're going to find. I mean, mm -hmm. we're. I, I, in, I think in the law enforcement arena, some people may disagree, but I think we're we're, we're top notch, right, uh, and whatnot. So, but that was probably like the the best part of being there was working with some of the best people. I mean, a lot of good good people. And the military kind of like prepared you for that. Do you? Would you say? Mm, you know, most of the people aren't military. Really, most I didn't know. Of, that. A lot of them are lawyers. A lot of them. Oh. A lot of them are lawyers. Um, you know, come from different backgrounds. A lot of um, are professional sports people. Mm. Um, who were, you know, uh, MLB, you know, NFL, um, and then they end up end up applying and getting accepted. But a lot of people come come away from all different backgrounds, which works, you know, from wow. having females um, to you know males, and then people from all around. Because you got to keep in mind that we travel the earth. Right. Yeah, we go everywhere. Oh, I was under the assumption that most um, people that work for the Secret Service were either policemen, policemen, or military. No, so a lot of, no. definitely off the track. Yeah. Thanks for uh, educating yeah. us. Um, so we're going to skip forward to what we're here for, what we're where we are at now. What inspired you to come to Africa, the continent? And is South Africa the first place you visited when you did make it here to the continent? Well, the answer to that is 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 yes, South Africa was the first place. It was the only place I've been. If you ask me other places, I can start naming, you know, fifty other places, other countries, maybe even more that I've been to because of my previous employment. Mm -hmm. um, so we ca I came here for World Cup. Um, Vice President Biden at the time mm -hmm. um, came here for World Cup, and so it was like just another assignment. Okay, Mark, you're going to you're going to South Africa for right. for World Cup. Okay, so let's go. Was that in Cape Town where they have the new arenas, or was no, it here it was too? All, it was actually all over the country. Okay, and, uh, I just happened to come to Johannesburg. Okay, yeah. Uh, when when was that? What year was that? 2010. 2010. Okay, yeah. so it was a long time. Ago. So what happens while you're here that inspired you to come back, or did that? inspire you to come back Girl, or not? That was it. Um, keep in mind, I've been to so many different countries. Most of them, I'm like, okay, we did our times. I'm not coming back or unless we come back through the job. Mm -hmm. um, I had zero intentions, but then I came here and I was thoroughly impressed with the infrastructure, with the people that I met, like what was going on. It was all black. 
we were doing our thing. Um, and I mean, we really shined down here in South Africa. And I was like, this is crazy. And then some of the people that I met, you know, along the way, you know, my 10 days here, 10, 11 days here, was it was even better. And I'm like, this don't make no sense to the point to where I'm, um, one of my good friends, he was the deputy chief of police for this province or this state that we're in right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was like, Mark, you know, you need to come back. You need to come back. I want to host you. I want to show you what we do down here because I was just impressed by what I saw and the people that I ran across. Right. Yeah. And that was t- that's 10 years that's ago. 10 years ago, ago, yeah. I'll definitely, <laughs> the first thing I noticed when I touched down, because it was in the evening, was the beautiful sunset. Yeah. I haven't, I, I haven't seen a sunset like that anywhere. That, that, those hues of colors. Yeah. So, when did you come back after that? That first trip, when, when, when was your return? Because that means a lot about sometimes an impression a country makes on you, how soon you return there. Yeah, it didn't take long. I think the next year. So me and my wife, you know, she had never been here, and, I, and she got tired of me talking about it. Oh, my God. <laughs> South Africa this, South Africa that. When I was in South Africa, all the food, the this, right. those, those sunsets, those purple hues in the, right. in the, in the sky, it's, it's incredible. It's mm-hmm. intoxicating mm-hmm. to the point to where I brought her, and at the time my mother was, was alive, I brought her and about my daughter. She was 12. Wow. And it had a massive impact on all of them. All of them, they, you know, my daughter, she's, she's 24 now. Mm-hmm. And she's been here like seven or eight times. Wow. And she always chooses to come come here. Now that I live here, she just comes to visit. Right. And then, of course, my mother, before she passed, that's, that's all she talked about. Wow. When I was in South Africa, when I was in South Africa, you know, I had such a good time. I got treated well. Right. Um, and then, of course, you know, Tasha, she was, her head was like mine. Like when can you know we, when we left? She was like, when can we come back? Right. So then we ended up coming back again the following year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, don't, I don't even think it was a full year, mm-hmm. and we came because we wanted to see, okay, can we live here? Right. Like, can we actually live here? So we had our company; it was running fine. I just resigned from the Secret Service, and was, I was, we was working at it every day. Um, so we we decided to take two months, and we. Went to, went to Cape Town, never been there, didn't know anybody, didn't tell anybody we was going, we just went. Right. And we spent two months there, and we learned a lot about South Africa right. in Cape Town. What was the, I guess, your misconceptions about South Africa before you got here? Did you have any, like, in your mind that you, that, you, that erased within those first 10, ten days? Well, yeah, I, well, first of all, I just, I, you know... <laughs> <laughs> Most places that I've been through in the world is there are what you expect. When you land in when you land in France, no matter where you go, you expect a certain thing. When you're in Italia or Italy, you expect a certain thing. When you're in South America, you expect a certain thing. So my intention was when I came here, I was like, oh my God, this this is going to be a mess. Because actually, nobody really wanted to come. Oh, wow. You know, we didn't, nobody wanted to come, so they was like, okay, well you got to go. I'm like, okay, I you black, go. you got to go. Yeah, basically, <laughs> I didn't want to say that part, but that's what happened. Right. So I ended up going, and so I had a I had a Probably the, 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 the common misconception that there was nothing here, it's going to be a bunch of dirt, am I going to be able to eat the food, Is it, it's, it's just going to be a bunch of poor black people who don't have anything, and I got to sit there and look at them. That's what basically what we thought it was going to be. And, and again, every time we get on a plane, uh, we always get a State Department representative. Um, briefing? To, a briefing. And he, they actually, it's a State Department briefer comes. And he, he starts to read this, 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 and this. Now, when we went to Moscow, they were spot on. We went to Moscow. It was, it was exact. I mean, people were following you around. You couldn't do anything. It was, it was like you would expect. But mm-hmm. South Africa was nothing like I expected. Mm-hmm. Um, when did you decide that you were gonna stay here? You came back the third time and yeah. stayed two months. Yeah. How, how long did it take for you to say, we're going to move here? Well, honestly, it was during that trip. Um, it took us a while because, you know, we had a company. It was running very well. We was actually growing it. We was doing, we was doing very well. So we couldn't just leave. So our plan was to build the company in a way to where we didn't have to be there. So we had, like, everything was electronic. So we can see when patients check in. We can see when co-pays were taken and, and, and so forth. So we have full intentions probably in 2013 to say if we can punch out now, let's go punch out. And now keep in mind at the time, the exchange rate was like 8 to 1, 9 to 1, and we thought we was balling out of control. Right, right now it's 15, 15 and a half, yeah. 16 to 1. To one 
So I think I made a good bet. Yeah. Overall. Yeah. So physically, you moved here when? We to moved stay here in 2018. 2018. Mm -hmm. So this is before COVID. Did you stay here during COVID? Yes, that was the probably the best move I could have okay. made. Yeah. Tell us about that. <laughs> well, it's funny. We was in the U.S. We were doing a travel show, and we in, in D.C. And then the COVID thing kind of they was talking about it, and then we were supposed to go to Philly, and then they end up in the I think they end up canceling that. Mm -hmm. And um, so, I mean, it was spreading like pretty quick. So we jumped. So we barely got out of there, uh, out of the U.S. Um, you said we got to get no, out of here, right? Because you know, we, all our stuff is there. We was okay. we was we were entrenched in in South Africa, mm -hmm. and so on. I can't remember the date, but the one day prior for them to just lock the gates. For right. Them. So when our plane landed, we landed like four hours prior to them saying nobody's coming in. Wow. So South Africa did a hard lockdown, a super hard lockdown. Right. There was no no play play, no nothing, because they, they've been through things like this before right. as an African Ebola continent. Yeah, like so that. they know what to do. So right. they locked everything down. You couldn't go outside. Uh, only can get essentials, hospital essentials only, right. everything locked down. And um, I think it was a, a, an extreme success simply because when it was time for people to start coming out, you know, then we started doing social distancing, you know, doing our hands. I mean, even today, they still have some, yeah, some minor some measures restrictions. in place. But yeah. it, it was, it was, it was interesting. But it, I think a couple. I would rather have been um, here than watching the TV because we, we we watched a lot of US TV because of streaming services. Right. Man, people, it was it was bad on that side. It looked really bad, and people were still out complaining about wearing a mask. And we're like, and we it's, the freedoms of America. Yeah. <laughs> so everything everything the president put out. Once he put it out, that was it. Right. And and nobody felt like they needed to go against it. Right. It was like, oh, the, well, the president said we were in a mask. The president said... That's we, an American thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we can't do this, we can't do that. And we followed it. Right. Yeah. I mean, p people, some people did pass, but a lot of people probably survived simply because South Africa just decided to take the lead in, in this thing and, and, and let's do what we got to do. Okay. So now tell us about where you have lived or have visited in South Africa. What are your favorite areas? And what... What do you suggest people see when they're here? Well, you know, it all depends. I mean, I think South Africa in general, for me, you know, it's going to sound biased. Everywhere to me is is, is is my favorite. You know, we got the we got the deserts. We got the we got beach coastline, Atlantic coast. Tell them where those areas are. Okay. Um, like, where's the the beaches of like Durban and Cape Town? Yeah, like Durban, tell Cape Town. Um, then you have Port Elizabeth. You got East London. Um, you got uh, PE, which is uh, what we call Port Elizabeth. They changed the name, but I can't pronounce it. Um, I mean, along the whole coastline, there's there's beautiful beaches. Yes. Um, you know that you can go to. Uh, you can go all the way as far north as, as Port Elizabeth. And so, I mean, that's a lot of beach. I mean, South Africa is the same size or similar size to Texas. Wow, that's yeah. huge. Yeah, so it's, it's massive. Right. You know, um, I mean, I love. I mean, my my favorite place is Johannesburg for the diversity because you get everything here in this city. You get every all the cultures, all the people, and you can experience it all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, for me, my second is 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 is, is Durban. Durban. Uh, it has a, a serious vibe. You got the Indian Indian Oceans. Stays warm uh, most most time of the year. Um, and then, of course, all the other parts of, 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 of South Africa. And one thing that people don't get is the fact that even we got the, the, the bigger cities, and we got a, a lot of bigger cities. You know, you got some of the smaller cities like Polo Kawani, which has a lot of culture. Um, you got a lot of villages where people live. Like people, a lot of people that live in these cities come from these, these villages, um, and of course townships. And those are just three different vibes that um, you have to experience. You can't do that, right. you know, on the internet. You got to go. Yeah. The other good thing is that. For the most part, everyone speaks English, although yeah. there are about 10 other dialects that some of the people speak as well. Yeah. Did you pick up on any of that or felt a need to learn some of that? Or did it really matter, being that most they mostly speak English? Well, it's funny, and, and this is just my opinion. Mm -hmm. You know, the older you are, the more respect you get. You know, so if I, if I was 70, I get whatever I want. I'm 50 something now. I'm I'm pretty up on the yeah. Total. Happy belated birthday! You just had a birthday yeah, not too yeah, soon ago. I saw your video. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's it's interesting. So there's I I I never I mean 
I understand what they're saying to me. I just re respond in English because mm. everybody speaks English. They speak a more of a British um, yeah, style they have of a English British undertone. Yeah, uh -huh. and um, but um, no, I don't. I don't personally feel like I need to learn the um, the language. I probably should, but I, I get a, I get around just fine. Yeah, I mean, one thing you don't have to worry about for the most part is the language. Yeah. Everyone here, even when I'm ear hustling, people are speaking English. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot. Well, yeah, and it's funny you say that because you would assume that every South African knows all the South African languages, and most of them don't. They might know four of the languages, five of the languages, even seven of the languages. So the, the go-between is not Afrikaans. It's English, right? And so everybody knows English from right. from a little kid always, you know, right. always. And they fought for that though, and I, yeah. which I just learned at the at the youth festival, how they really tried to railroad them and make them speak Afrikaans yeah. instead of take English out so they could control the people. Yeah. And I, it's more on that, and I had some um, insight from uh, South African that you know gave me the history. But yeah. But yeah, just to add that in, um, tell us about your company and what you do for mostly African Americans mm -hmm. that want to come here, that do, that, that make the decision to come to the continent, yeah. what, what is it that you provide, you and your wife provide okay. For, okay. for the people that are interested, that are afraid, that are curious, <laughs> you know, just, you know, yeah. I think what you, what you guys do, blind side, and not everybody's ready for the blind side, mm -hmm. not everybody's ready to walk into a situation that they don't know anything about, True. or they don't know much about, so please tell them how you can help, you know. Okay, um, you know, we, we do everything to take the mystery out of it, because we remember how it was when we got here, and we were so like enamored with South Africa, but we didn't have like a, a somebody to, to to show us and tell us and make it easy for us. But we we did a lot of it ourselves. Um, us being entrepreneurs the way we are, we decided to say, okay, let's let's form a company that can formally do this and do this thing proper. Meaning that when you get out the plane, there's somebody you know in a, in a nice tie picking you up from the airport or the, the the locations that you stay in. We want to stay in nice stuff, so we want you to stay in nice stuff. So, but we. Did code all these things um, for you. We do all of that. So only thing you really have to do is just trust the fact that, you know what, I want to come to South Africa. I'm dealing with the real South Africa and I'm going to come and have a good time. And then of course, you know, once you we want to tell you to download the app and just keep following um, following the itinerary that we set up for you. And I promise you, it's things that we want to do as, right. as, as black folk. Right. We know we want to eat good food. We right. want to go to nice places. We want to shop. We want to, you know, believe it or not, if you've never done a safari or a game drive, you need to do that. Even though you're probably saying, I don't want to do that. No, you do. I didn't get a chance to do it. Yeah. You know, just. It's, it's coming. I'm, it's definitely coming. It's, coming. it's, it's coming. definitely coming. And uh, I had to buy a jacket here. So. South Africa is one of the countries in Africa that actually does get cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do get, this, right now we're in winter. Right. And this winter's not going to last long. Mm -hmm. There's not no freezing, freezing cold. But right. yeah, you do need a jacket mm -hmm. um, in, the, in the winter. Our winter is June and July. Right. In my August, things are kind of picking back up again. Mm -hmm. And then we're back in the swing September through, the, through, through May of, of, of the following mm -hmm. year. Um, and whatnot, but yeah, but we have we've been pretty fortunate enough to take care of a lot of people to bring those people who've been wanting to come to South Africa all these years or come to Africa in general, and then they see what we're doing, and then they come, and then they're they're all uh, pleasantly surprised to the point to where a lot of them say, "I think I can live there," right. and then a lot of people are like, "I want to stay," and then they come back and, right. and they start forming relationships. So that's ultimately what we're doing. We want our people to start forming a relationship with Africa. And granted, we do South Africa, um, but if you can get on anywhere, get on anywhere. I'm, I'm going to always say that because we need people coming to Africa. Mm -hmm. What what what's the sentiment of most people once they come and once they <laughs> when they're ready to leave after you taking them around and gave them you know you show, gave them the ropes you showed them around you set them up with you know events and tours yeah. and all that. What's the sentiment at the end? Do you know? Yeah, some people feel in the end they they don't. No, nobody wants to leave. Not one soul. I never had anybody say, oh, "Okay, my time is up. I'm ready to go." They're in the airport, calling us, saying, "Man, thank you. That was that was that was that was the best. It was better than anywhere else that we've been. Um, we wasn't on a resort, you know, where you just get kind of locked in for a week and then you come out. Um, they got a chance to be amongst the people. I think." 
um, the best one of the best sentiments is that they get the chance to meet South Africans. Like like I think you said earlier, you just happen to run across somebody and yeah. and it's and it's like that. Um, I think the, one of the biggest sentiments is the fact that they feel like they've been lied to um, the entire time. You know, they were expecting one thing, even though they may have seen one of our videos. But then they then they come here and they said, I've been, I've been lied to. And then I think lastly, they're like, why am I working so, working so hard, fighting for uh, something that I can get here in South Africa just for just being black? Yeah. yeah. And I watched, I did a lot of research. I watched your videos. I watched mm -hmm. other people's videos. And it's still not the same once you're here because there are not enough videos that can show you yeah. your possibilities here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You got to see it with the naked eye, you know. Um, Tell people how they can reach you if they want your services. Okay, sure. You know. Sure. And you said you have an app. Well, once you once you book with us, mm -hmm. we have you because we everything we do is electronic. Okay. So you get electronic itinerary. Everything is is 100. You go to our website, which is that's the best way to find us is right. therealsouthafrica.com. Just go to our website mm -hmm. and then just start scrolling around. You will see different cities. You can click on. Then you can look at itineraries um, that are already there. And keep in mind, we we spend a lot of effort putting those itineraries together. So we know if you pick one of those, you're going to have a great time. Oh, so you got them pre-selected already? Everything they can select we, one. We done the work. All okay. the work is done. This, this, there is, this, there is, this is, is high level, uh, you know what I'm saying? This is, this is yeah, you are, you are entrepreneurs, you already, you've been in do. business. So this is not no rinky dink no, show. Here. No, this is no, sophistication only, here. Yeah. And he's providing luxury, yeah. luxury travel to yeah. South Africa. Yeah. And trust me, I was thoroughly impressed with the luxurious parts of South Africa. Um, it, I mean, they got some bread here and yeah. uh, I went out and, man, I don't know, I mean, bottles going to the table, <laughs> sparkles. <laughs> this is one of the countries I've been to that you could actually go to the mall and find some things you like. Like, I've been to countries where I've been like, uh-uh, I can't wear that, I can't yeah. fit that. They have enough luxuries here that, I mean, I, I was in the Santon Mall and they got, that, I'm just saying from top to bottom, mm -hmm. It covers everything. You you could move here and live here and not give up any your com no. comfort creatures that you have in the States. No. You're 100% right. We have a lot of U.S. brands, a lot of European brands, and then we have all the South African brands. Yes. So everything converges here, and a lot of people don't realize that Johannesburg is like the hub of Africa. Right. Everything happens here in Joburg. It's everything. called the Gold City, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. City of Gold. City of Gold. Yeah. So everything happens here for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have our own stock exchange. We have everything here, and so it's to me, this is about the closest that you that you're going to find to a Wakanda for you know for us. And the people that I've come across are very intelligent. Yeah. You know, like so, I was telling my friends like people talking about you know finding a wife in another country and all that and I was like this is a place that you could find a mate that Easy. could bring something to the table yeah. whereas some of those other places that brothers visit and they talk about finding a, a, a mate and I'm like those are going to be places where you're going to have to take care of somebody yeah. for the most part and it doesn't matter if they are educated it doesn't matter if they're a lawyer or, or a teacher you're still probably going to have to take care of them we're here you know, they got some education and they got some money. Yeah. <laughs> now, people, people, you know, people are doing very, very well here. And, the, you know, the people that are, that are, that haven't arrived yet here in South Africa, um, I can say the middle class is massive and the upper class is getting bigger every day. Um, I mean, they move exponentially um, in, in that department. And I can say I've been in the U.S. and I, I mean, it's taken generations to move move as fast as these guys have been. In 10 years here, they are just... Um, and the, the good part about it is is that we can all be a part of it. It's not like they don't want us here. They actually do want us here, you know, because they want us to equally partner with these guys to say, okay, if we're going to go to the next level, they know they need their brothers and sisters here in the diaspora. And so they're they're excited to see that when we, when we show up, because the problem is, they always say, where are the African-Americans, uh, you know? 
I haven't said my brother, my sister so much in my life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like everybody that I, I'm mostly coming in contact with yeah. is my brother and my sister. You know what I mean? So it's, 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 I've been, and I've been feeling good saying that all the time. Yeah. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, my sister. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Excuse me, my brother. Excuse me, my sister. And they're very receptive to yeah. that. Yeah. You know? yeah. So thank you for your time. And thank no you problem. for finding some time to um, meet with me. Absolutely. And I just want to help you grow your channel, your information. Please check out his channel, The Real South Africa, on YouTube. Yeah. The Real South Africa on Facebook. Uh, Facebook. On oh, Instagram. South, on it's, Instagram. It's the Real South Africa 18. Okay, The Real South Africa 18 yeah. on IG. Yeah. Um, do you want to leave a number or, or, or something? Yeah, um, let's see. What's the number? You can actually give us a call at 540-699-0932. It's a U.S. number, so you don't have to worry about it. It'll ring um, um, to us and so forth. But we, we um, you know, I, I will I will say to you that if you want to come to South Africa, go ahead and, and start making your start planning. And unfortunately, you know, when you start telling people about you want to come to South Africa, they're going to be like, I ain't going to South Africa. So we do have it set up where you don't have to worry about a group trip. If you want to come by yourself, you want to pick your dates. If you want to do all of the stuff that you know, you know, like you said, we're a professional organization, right. um, and we have a lot of support uh, people around us to do what we do. So if you decide that you want to come for six days just to come see. For yourself, we had one lady come for three days. Wow. She was like, I just want to come, I just, I just got to see it. Right. And she spent almost as much time in the air than she did yeah. on the ground. And you know, she didn't sleep much, but she had a good time. Yeah, yes. And I to, just to end it off, um, I almost did not make it here, and it was not initially on my list because people told me that it was dangerous. So, you know, I was here to do Cape Town and Durban, and mm -hmm. you know. But God got a plan, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And I'm so glad that I came in. I'm going to shout out to my brother, uh, Jamel, around the world. He's with uh, BMO, Black Men Travel. They were just here not too long ago. Mm -hmm. And um, he told me, he said, he said, Zoe, I think you're going to be making a huge mistake if you don't go to uh, Johannesburg. Yeah, this is it. And he was right. Yeah, this is <laughs> I'll it. I'll get to Durban next time. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. this is fire. Uh, and thank you again, brother. No problem, bro. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>